In this video walkthrough algebra lesson, we'll be taking a look at writing expressions that record calculations with numbers. And this is standard 50A A2. We'll be looking at this worksheet. You can go to worksheetsandwalkthroughs.com to print out a copy for yourself. You'll find it under our algebra section. And it's entitled Writing Expressions that Record Calculations with Numbers. First off, we have a definition. Expression. It's a series of numbers and symbols. And in this case, uh, you could look at we have the operation symbols. And these are in series without an equal sign. So in other words, we won't be evaluating or solving any of these. But however, the directions say to write the expressions for the following. We have six of this type of problem. And then we have number seven, in which we have to describe how the expression 7 times 10 times 10 relates to the expression 10 times 10. So let's take a look at the first question. Number 1, add 14 and 6, then multiply by 5. So in this case, you can imagine that you are purchasing two items. One is 14 and the other is $6 for example, and then you have to multiply by 5. In this case, maybe you'd be multiplying by 5 because you wanted to buy these items for five different people. So how would we set this up? Well, you have to do these in order. And this expression will start with a couple of numbers in parentheses with an operation symbol in between. So you might be thinking, OK, I know this one. You start off with 14 and 6, and it does say we need to add those together. And then you multiply by 5. And you'll notice in some expressions that there really is no operation symbol between this digit and the parentheses. In this case, it's implied that you multiply. When there's not a symbol given, or an operation symbol, <laughs> that is, then it is implied that you multiply. So really, what you would do is you would, if you were to evaluate this and set it equal to something, it would become an equation. In this case, we're not going to solve for that. But re just realize that you can set up this, e this expression to represent these numbers and these words. So we have, again, 14 plus 6 times 5. Let's check out the next one. In this case, we have to double 12, then divide by 6. And you can see, as we've learned in order of operations, we do parentheses, or what's inside the parentheses first. So let's do that. We've got double 12, so that is 12 times 2. And then we're going to divide by 6. You could write this another way. You could do 12 times 2 in parentheses. And then, since every fraction can be viewed as a division problem, you could set it up like this. 12 times 2, which is what you would do first. That would be parentheses in the order of operations. And then you would go to your next operation, which would be division and you divide by 6. So that's a quick look and that's number 2. A lot of times you'll see expressions um, in computer programming and in those expressions that certain set of operations are set in a certain order and the calculations may have to be done to get the correct answer. And in many cases um, when you go to a store and you m use a cash register the programmers who design the cash register have included expressions within the programming. So in this case, let's take a look at what this expression might be that might be part of a program within a cash register. Let's check it out. 3 times the sum of $4.50 and $0.36. Cents. So we have to do 3 times the sum. Hmm. How would we set that up? 
So I know we have 3 times something, and we have to multiply 3 times the sum of $4 and 50 cents plus, so again, sum here means we need to add. So the sum of $4.50 plus 36 cents. And there you have an expression. So again, if you're going to a cat, uh, a store and you're purchasing something at the cash register, you might buy three of something, or maybe in this case it's four dollars fifty cents plus the eight percent tax, which is what that would work out to be. So if you bought three dollars, uh, three items at four dollars and fifty cents each plus tax, this expression would help you to calculate what you would pay for those items. Another way you could write this as well is to really move this 3 to the other side. I mean, that's another possibility as well. And would give you the same result. You'd still have to compute what is in the parentheses first, then multiply by 3. Let's try number 4. Half the difference of 4,577 and 633. So half the difference. Hmm. So you could write this a couple different ways. Let's try this first way. We've got one half times the difference. And you're probably thinking, ah, difference. That means subtract. And you'd be exactly right. Good for you. So we'd have to find the difference of these two numbers. We have 4,000. 577 minus 633. Well, that is one way you would show half the difference. We have one half times this difference. And that would be the expression for this sentence. All right, so now the other way that you could do this, we could try 400, I'm sorry, excuse me, 4,577 minus 633. Again, we'd have that in parentheses. And then you'd set that over two because anytime you're multiplying by one half, it also could be seen as dividing by 2. So you'd subtract because that is in the parentheses, followed by your next operation would be divide by 2. And that would definitely give you one half of this difference. Let's check the next one. Add 721 and 53, then multiply by 8 hundredths. So let's do that. Okay, we've got parentheses again. because This is what we want to do first. We'll set that up. 721, and again, we're going to add. So 721 plus 53. And multiply that by 8 hundredths. And this would be the expression that would match this sentence. Let's try another one up. We'll try number 6, and here it is, 7 times the product of 10 and 3. 7 times, okay, so we've got that 7 times the product, and in this case product, you're probably thinking, ah, that tips me off to look at multiplication. Good, if you're thinking that, good for you. So we've got 7 times the product of 10 and 3. There you have it. And again, like I said before, you could switch this. Oh, I have to separate that. You could take the 7 and change it around. You could put the 7 on the other side. And it would give you the same result. Again, because order of operations tells us that we need to handle what's in these parentheses first. Then we could multiply by 7. Number 7. Aha. It says, describe how the expression 7 times 
the product of 10 times 10 relates to the expression 10 times 10. Well, as you can see, the big difference here is that we have this 7 outside the parentheses. So, in any time you see a number set outside the parentheses like this, you could think of it as multiplication. And in this case, it's 7 times whatever would be in here. So, you could have uh, 10 bologna sandwiches times 10 people, and then down here you would have 10 bologna sandwiches times 10 people. However, this expression would be 7 times greater than this expression, all because that 7 on the outside, it's 7 times whatever, whatever is in the parentheses. <clears throat> Again, you could have really anything imaginable in there. You know, you have the same information with inside these parentheses, you would still have this expression being 7 times greater in value than this expression. So describe how the expression relates, this expression relates to the second expression. In this case, we'd have 7 times the product of 10 and 10 would be seven times greater than the expression 10 times 10. And there you have it. That was a quick look at writing expressions that record calculations with numbers. Thanks for checking out worksheetsandwalkthroughs.com, and we'll see you again next time.